Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we'll be taking a look at this. Now this is an original PlayStation and this is one that I've been given for free to take a look at today and I guess that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at this, see if it works and if it does we'll give it a little bit of a clean or maybe a lot of a clean. I'm not sure if it comes across well on camera but this thing is pretty, pretty grim it smells a bit it's sticky it's brown when it should be gray and yeah it's honestly not the most pleasant machine i've ever taken a look at but that's what we are gonna do today if this works not sure what i'll do with it if it doesn't work not sure what i'll do with it either i already have an original playstation that's in pretty near immaculate condition so i don't really have a use for this one maybe i'll give it back to the person i got it from if it works i guess we will just see. So let's start off by taking a look around this machine. As I've already said, it's really grim, but let's try and ignore that for now. I'm not gonna bother cleaning this if it doesn't work, so we'll just test it out before giving it a clean. But this is all just very standard PlayStation. Reset button there looks to click. Power button here, that looks to click too. And of course, our eject button. In there is the optical drive looks quite dirty but the laser looks to be okay and it doesn't shut oh so the eject button doesn't want to come back up for whatever reason it's got itself stuck down mm, there we go hitting it made it better sony playstation of course i do like the old colored logo and ignore my nail that is kind of coloured but ignore that and um, it looks like someone has written something on here don't exactly know what that says but we do have an old sticker on here from when this machine was sold at some point in time if that'll focus you might be able to make out that this did sell at some point for 44 pounds now back when i bought my original playstation about 10 years ago I bought it from CEX for £10. Now they're going for about the £40 to £60 mark again. So I'm guessing this was bought over 10 years ago when their values were still a bit higher. I think I bought mine at the bottom of the depreciation curve and now they're starting to go back up. So that's pretty cool. I guess this is a bit of an investment if you want to consider it like that. But yeah, hopefully this works because it will actually be worth quite a bit if it cleans up nicely. On the front, of course, our two controller ports and, of course, our memory card slots too. Doesn't look like those doors are broken, so that is good. On the side, we just have our air vent. On the other side, it's the same story. On the back, we have our AC in. We have our AV multi out and our serial I.O. there as well. On the bottom, that's the colour this machine is meant to be not the weird brownie gray from the other side and down here we have our models this is a pal model which is good to know and this is an scph-9002 being a 9000 model this is actually one of the final ones this is from the last revision that came out in may 1999 so that is pretty cool we do have quite a late one here. I'm not exactly sure when the PS2 came out. I thought that was about 2001-ish, but this was the last revision of the original PlayStation. Of course, the little weird PS1 was a thing as well. That came out, I believe, in about July 2000, and it's based on the same hardware as this model. I quite like those little PS1s. I'll put a picture up on screen if you don't know what they look like, but they are quite sweet. I think this is overall a cooler machine just because it is like the most original looking one but yeah that's pretty cool that this is quite a late one what i'm going to do is i'm going to go get my original playstation and check what model that is okay so here's the crummy dirty playstation then here is mine you can very clearly see a difference in color there now this one has been in a house where there is a smoker so this might be nicotine or it might have just faded over time. It's difficult to know. Mine's quite dusty and I don't really clean it that often. It's kind of just been sat for years, not really doing much, but still 
That is absolutely night and day difference. I didn't realise how bad this one was, but seeing the two there, yeah, that is quite concerning. I don't think we'll be able to get this back looking like this, but we can definitely make it cleaner. And yeah, on camera, you can really see the difference there. So looking, these look identical. I know that some didn't have the logos and they had words on them saying eject and power. Both of these ones have the logo. And looking on the bottom of mine, this is also a 9000 Model 2. So these are both last of the line models, which are both the final revision. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We have both of the most modern versions here. So these should be pretty much identical machines, which is pretty nice to see. Although it would have been interesting to have different models to compare the subtle differences, but having two the same is pretty cool too. So I think all that's left to do is plug this one in, hope it doesn't catch on fire, and hope that it works. So we'll have to go downstairs to the television where the cabling already is from this one. Let's just swap it in and see what happens. And I've got a disc we can use. I have F198. It's a very good game. So let's give this a go and hopefully it doesn't kill my disc. These black discs are so cool. I still don't really understand how they work, but yeah, they're very cool. They just look like a bit of plastic, but somehow there's a game on this. Very impressive. So let's now go downstairs and see if this will set the house on fire. All right, I'm now downstairs. Apologies for the lighting and the dust. I wasn't anticipating filming down here today, yet here we are. Here is the machine and I'm just gonna plug it into my existing cabling that is going down here. Now I've set the television to the correct input and hopefully, as soon as I press that power button, something should come up on the screen. So let's see. Oh, power button doesn't want to stay down. Let's try that again. Right, so I'm gonna have to just hold the power button down because it wants to ping itself back up. There we are. It's powered up, but as soon as I let go of the power button... Oh. Oh wait, I think it's coming back. So that's curious. I think we've got a bit of a sticky power button, but it's on now. So let's put the disc in and see what happens. I've not brought a controller down, but let's just see if the game loads first of all. Open the optical drive, and I think the eject button is now stuck down. So let's see what happens if I close it. Yep, won't stay down, give it a hit. There we are. Now hopefully the game should load. So let's power off the machine, power it back up. The power button is now working. That sort of glitch there on startup, my other one does that as well. So I think that's more of a television issue as it's trying to like work out what's going on. So I don't think that's a problem with this machine. Let's see if it will load up into the game. No, the game is in there. Can't hear it spinning now, which is curious. So let's see what is going on down here. Let me open that. This is not spinning. Let's press reset. Oh wait, the screen's gone black. It's restarting by itself, it would appear. Let's see if anything happens this time. We are back to the main menu. Okay, not sure if you can hear that, but you can definitely see that. The game's now loading, I just had to hit it a bit. I don't think the latch was recognizing that it was shut, so the disc wasn't spinning up. But now it definitely is, and there we are. It looks to be loading up. Disc drive is making slightly concerning noise. Don't know if you'll be able to hear that, so let me take you off the tripod. Yeah, that's quite loud. And also it's frozen. Looks like it's tried to load up, 
but it has frozen because it shouldn't really look like that as far as I'm concerned. Let's try restarting it and the disc is not spinning again. Let me see if just opening this again and hitting it a bit will help. I think we have a little bit of an issue here. Might just be because it's dirty and it's just getting a bit jammed or the entire mechanism might just be being a little bit silly. I'm going to get a controller down just to see if I can go through the interface and see if that's working. Don't see why it wouldn't, but we should probably test that anyway. All right, so I've now plugged a controller in. This one works just fine with my PlayStation, so it should work with this one. Pressing the analog button isn't yet making it light up. Let's wait for it to finish booting. There we are. But you can see pressing the button is making it light up. So can I move through the interface? No, I can't. That's curious. I'm literally pressing every single button and it won't let me move. Okay, so I've now plugged my PlayStation in. Here's the controller. As you can see, I can go, oh, maybe not. My analog light's not lighting up now. It was just working before I pressed record because you get a little cursor that comes up, but now that's gone. Maybe my controller's just gone a bit dodgy. Okay, my controller is now working again. As you can see, the cursor is going through that just fine. Let's plug it back into the other PlayStation, see if it works now. I'm getting a little bit confused here. Grubby PlayStation is now plugged back in. With the controller plugged in, the cursor is now showing up. Can I move around the interface? No. No, I can't. Let's see. Oh, yes. It just moved. Oh. And it's decided to restart itself. And then cut off. And restart itself. Uh, might just be the power button, that, being a bit silly still. This thing probably needs completely deconstructing and cleaning, like, internally as well. Because if the outside looks like this, I'm guessing the inside won't be much better. It's been sat in a box for years, so that probably hasn't done it any good. But yeah, I now can't navigate through the interface again. Okay, so that's going to be all the messing I'm going to do with this thing for today. It really needs deconstructing, so that is something we will do in a future video. But what I will do now is just give the outside of the case a bit of a wipe, just so it's not a biohazard and so it's not sticky. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a wipe with some baby wipes. Hopefully that will help. Might use some antibacterial wipes later on if I deem it's necessary. But for now, baby wipes and some tissues to dry it should be okay to get it a little bit better. It'll probably never go grey again, but let's just give this a bit of a go. Just going to clean the outside because another time we will do the inside. That's a rather appetising looking wipe, isn't it? Lovely. Okay, so that is where we're going to leave it for today. I've given this machine a bit of a wipe. It's now less sticky. Still a bit sticky and it's still brown and full of marks, but it is better than it was. You can still definitely tell the difference between the two machines. So does this thing work? To an extent, yes, we can get it to boot into the main menu. Not sure whether not being able to move around on the screen is to do with my controller or this machine. My controller was being a bit funny on this one too, so I'm guessing it's probably a controller fault. So that's something I'm going to have to look into. I think the reason the game wasn't loading is just because of this eject button and it didn't think the flap was shut. Not sure why the game crashed. Maybe that's because it thought the flap opened and it panicked or something. Or maybe there's something wrong with the disc reading mechanism because it was quite loud. It was louder than this one ever has been. And since these are the same model, I'd expect them to have the same mechanism so they wouldn't make different sorts of noises. So maybe there's just something up with this, like it's got too much dirt in it 
or something. But when we take it apart, I guess we will discover that. But just looking at these lids, the lids are actually different. I'm not sure if you can tell from that angle, but if you can see that one, that weird blobby thing is for the PlayStation logo, and that is quite small. On this one, it's bigger. Like the blob is bigger, is the actual logo bigger? I don't think so, so I'm not sure why the blobby bit is. But also, like, the markings in it are different as well. That says R1-2, and this one says 0-9-1. So the lids are different, which is curious. I kind of thought they would be exactly the same. But the writing seems to be the same down here. And the actual mechanisms themselves look to be the same. So I'm not sure why the lids are different. Maybe one's a replacement lid. Who knows? I guess we'll probably never find out. But maybe it's something that I can look into. But that will now be it for this video. I need to somehow get this to shut again. So let's try hitting it. Oh. There we are. And the other one shuts nicely because it's respectable. So thank you very much for watching this video. Kind of interesting to see that this does work to some extent. It'll be curious to see whether it fully works after giving it a deep clean. So that is something to stay tuned for. That should be happening very, very soon. If I can work out how to take this apart. I've never taken one apart before. So that will be interesting to see. So make sure you stay tuned to come along on that journey with me dismantling a PlayStation for the first time and hopefully we don't break it any more than it already is but I should probably just stop rambling now and go so thank you again for watching this video hopefully it was interesting in some way I will see you in the next one goodbye